Welcome to the Industry Experts Panel at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Halliday. Today, we are headed for an amazing show because our guest today is Mr. Gregory Manorino of TradersChoice.net. Greg is one of our favorite guests. He's an expert trader in the global capital markets and with everything taking place right now around the world due to the coronavirus combined with the massive ongoing printing of our currency. There is no one that we would rather be talking to right now. Greg, welcome to the show. How are you today? Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm doing very well, despite the current situation. <laughs> exactly. I know you're in Vegas. It's like a, a, a apocalyptic right now, right? It is. My neighborhood's a ghost town. It, it's, it's just it's become a ghost town. It's very sad. My neighbors are great people, but I haven't even seen them. And then when I do see them, they're like, you know, across the street, <laughs> you know, no one wants to get Don't together. Come near I mean, me. they, they right. really have a large, you know, portion of this population um, terrified, all by design, of course. Uh, me, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of anything. That's the truth. Um, I have persevered through a lot in my life, and this is just going to be a stepping stone to me, honestly. And I don't want people to uh, get overly consumed with this because once that happens, you don't know what to do. And that's part of, I think, the plan here is to keep people paralyzed to not allow them to see what's going on around them, to not allow them to act. Because that's how people, I think, uh, are conditioned to respond to fear as they become paralyzed, like a deer in the headlights. And no, I think in situations like this, especially with these markets, you got to keep moving forward. you got to think about what you want to do, how you're going to protect yourself in a free fall market here. What we're seeing right now, there's so many facets to it. It's actually a little hard to get your head around. Let me outline what's happening here and why we're now seeing this right here and right now. First of all, let's put together a, a little timeline here. We had the release of this virus here in an industrial area in, in China. Notice my terminology here, release of the virus here. Uh, in my, not just in my view, but from all the stuff I have been given and I, I've been reading, um, I am absolutely convinced, and no one can possibly convince me of anything else after what I've seen, that this is, um, this is a bioweapon of one type or the other that was, is being used to issue in a completely new economic system uh, and a completely new financial system. I've already been telling people that this is the new America um, the old world America no longer exists anymore. Um, and again, we're seeing some very peculiar, uh, well, maybe peculiar, but some obviously things that we all would have expected in this environment. Let's talk about it again. So we get the release of this virus. We have Russia now uh, with their war on OPEC cr uh, cratering crude oil. Now, anyone that follows my work who knows these markets understands that how dependent the market is on high crude oil. The entire energy sector is dependent on it, the entire financial sector, the two largest sectors of this market. So the market, U.S. market goes into free fall along with markets around the world. So what do they do? They quickly say, okay, um, we have to now nationalize uh, industries. We have to nationalize corporations. Now, we've been seeing a merger uh, or a marriage being set up here for quite a long time between corporate America and the old American governmental philosophy. Uh, they are now being married completely, the marriage of uh, corporations and the United States government. These are not bailouts. These, this is, these are, corporations are being nationalized here. I think most people have an understanding of what we're looking at. When you have a merger between corporations and a government, uh, I mean, it's called fascism. I've been telling people this is some type of a new national socialism. I also told people that this new America where we are now is the hub uh, where it all would start. And I also told them, and this is common knowledge, the Federal Reserve is feeding dollars to central banks around the world, they're dollarizing the entire world uh, very, very rapidly. This is all happening very, very quickly. Virus, creating of crude oil, cratering of crude oil, cratering of the markets, nationalization of industries here. This is going on around the world. Um, and then the dollarization of the world, again, they're introducing a new monetary system. It's right in our face. Um, and again, these central banks around the world are more than happy 
to accept dollars because the dollar is so strong right now. But again, they're, they're using these dollars to buy assets. All these central banks run by the Wall Street banks. Um, you know, it, this is a takeover. This is a global takeover on an epic scale that we are seeing. And it's very, very rapid. So what I believe is going to happen is we're going to see uh, it's starting to get attention even on the mainstream, this digital dollar thing. Um, soon they're going to flip the switch. We're going to go to a cashless system completely. They're already talking about getting rid of paper currency because it's spreading the virus. All plays together. Oh, you, you, you know, don't. In fact, businesses around here have signs right in Las Vegas: "No cash accepted." This is going to be the norm. They're not accepting cash because they think the money's uh, contaminated. You must use a debit card. You must use a credit card. They don't want dollars. It's a, it's an incredible situation. But it's, it's, it's going to get worse. This has been going on. Right now, we're shut down. But this is before this whole thing. Let's, let's talk about that. No doubt about it that we're going to that kind of a situation. But before this whole thing started, I don't know about where you live, but no cash accepted. Uh, you know, debit or credit only. This is insane. It's absolutely insane. They have lines here at Walmart near my house. We have a super center that only accept credit. They don't want dollars. They're phasing it out. And again, they're going to switch, flip this switch, and that's it. We're going to a cashless society, a digital uh, currency of one type or the other, which is going to be a boon for whatever cryptos are out there. Uh, I already have the – I told people on my blog today, we're going to Bitcoin 10,000 very, very soon. Again, uh, metals are starting to take off here. you got to have the opposite side of that trade. There's no doubt about it. But that's um, it's part of the whole scheme. It, it's the new America, which is going to sweep the globe in a new – a new governmental philosophy and a new financial system and, and also a new constitution. The United States that we knew died literally on, on Friday the 13th. I said this to everyone. I said Friday the 13th was the end of a, a free market, uh, a capitalistic society. And, and the issue is, bigger than that, is that people want to be bailed out. See, people want to give up their liberty. They want to give up their freedom here, and they're going to. How many people watching this are expecting a check from the government? This is a free market. This is a free market economy. This is a free society. No. See, the powers that be understand that people have no tolerance for pain whatsoever. So what do they do? They cause a crisis and they offer a solution. It's the same thing. Oh, I can't feel any pain. I have to go to my stores. They got to be restocked again. My stock, my, my stock market portfolio is getting dissolved. Give me a solution. Bail me out. Sure. Nationalize the corporations. Let's merge them. Let's, let's create a fascist society. Let's create a, uh, a, a new world order. Literally, let's create uh, national socialism again. We know how well that worked out during World War II with Germany, don't we? Uh, and again, they're going to come after our freedoms and our liberties. And I guarantee you that this new America, sure, they're going to be able to satisfy probably a lot of the the instant needs, the gratification that people need because they don't want to suffer. And if people really believed in freedom, if people really believed in liberty, they wouldn't. They would be up in arms about. Uh, corporations that are being nationalized. They would not accept this stimulus package, which is just more debt being issued from a central bank. But no, they want to be slaves. They want to be taken care of from the cradle to the grave. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, and it's a complete lack of education to you, Greg. Um, I just had Alex Newman on this show who um, wrote a book, Crimes of the Educators, because um, the fact of the matter is it's been changing for about 200 years now, the education system. And so now that we have children coming up who are basically zombies, they're not taught. I mean, they're turned that now they're they're They know more about, you know, transgenderism than they actually do about history. And so by the time they make it to college, they don't realize that people fought and died to get out from under governmental um, of course. tyrannic um, you control. know slavery and they don't understand that once you start getting money it takes a very short amount of time for the government then to tell you what to wear what to eat where to live and how much you get to eat each day and then it starts to just spiral out of control mm -hmm. I want you to talk to the fact that um, not only the education system but we touched on the printing of the currency. It's my understanding that they're printing trillions of dollars of the United States money. What's this going to do to us? 
Well, again, th- this is what we're seeing here. It's, an, it's unprecedented. Uh, we have a system right now where it's been foretold that they're telling us unlimited amounts of liquidity are going to be supplied to this new America, this new government to nationalize everything. The Federal Reserve, I want people to understand this. Um, when, when the Federal Reserve started their repo operation, I don't know how many people realize what that is. The Wall Street banks are passing cash from one bank to another overnight uh, for, for two reasons. It started out as $50 billion per day um, just, as, just a few months ago. When it started, at the right at the onset, I told people, watch what's going to happen. I said, this is going to be vastly increased and it's going to be perpetual for two reasons. Number one, by these banks passing cash back and forth to each other, it was giving the illusion of liquidity. We're drying up here, despite the fact that we have trillions of dollars floating around here in, in La La Land, in Fancy Land. They're not real. They're not printed. Um, there's not enough. So you kept hearing from the mainstream media, liquidity crisis, liquidity crisis, or a credit freeze. This is what they really mean. When credit stops functioning, when, when the markets can't uh, move, you get, you know, no banks don't lend to each other. Businesses close. You don't get your cash out of the bank. That's part of the reason why they want to go to a digital currency to prevent uh, bank runs. But anyway, so they're doing. They're involved in this repo thing. It started at fifty billion just a few months ago. We are now at one trillion per day. One trillion per day, and it's going up from here. And the Fed, just like you said, we're burning through trillions of dollars an hour. They're funneling cash all over the place, supplying unlimited funds to this new government to take over the world. That's what this is. People got to open their eyes. This is a takeover uh, on a global scale. The, the new America is the hub, the Federal Reserve. We still have the reserve currency and we will continue to have it is dollarizing the world with trillions of dollars and telling the banks, these central banks buy assets with this, buy assets with this. They want to, it sounds like a science fiction movie, but the fact of the matter is they want to own the world since the inception of central banking. This has been their goal to own it all, to create slaves uh, and to own everything. And right now, that's exactly what's happening. It's very rapid. It's happening so quickly. You got people focused and afraid of the coronavirus, focused and afraid looking at their 401k plan. So they can't even conceive of what's going on right now. And again, the dumbing down of the children today is unbelievable. It's off the Richter scale. And, and, and the adults themselves too, again, they're caught like a deer in the headlights. They can't think. They don't know what's going on around them. They're told what to do, what to think, what to wear, what to be afraid of, who to be afraid of by the mainstream media. So this is a big, huge, ugly scheme here to issue in a, a new world order. Period. The end. We're here now. It's over. This isn't what is going to happen. This has happened already. It's happening now. It's ongoing. And there is no way to stop it. No way. People have deliberately given up their freedoms. They're going to give up their rights. Again, you, how many people, I want that check. I got to have those checks. Is, is, is this a free society? Of course not. When we're picking companies, the, the Federal Reserve is buying everything, including exchange-traded funds. They're buying the entire Dow 30. This is why the Dow Jones Industrial Average put on 2,000 points today. This is not the average guy or the average, but this is the Federal Reserve pulling the strings on this market right now. And whatever happens to the stock market, doesn't matter. It's, the, it's what's on the ground that's going to matter. The stock market is going to exist to make to create the two-tier society that we've been marching into for a very long time. I personally don't think the market's done selling off. The bond market is still flashing red. You've got a 10-year yield still below 1%. you got crude oil, which is below my two-year target, which I got laughed at. I told everyone crude was going to between 25 and 27 two years ago. Although I did tell people to buy it because it was disconnected from reality, but we finally hit my target. Um, I don't know how many of your people actually know that I was the first financial guy in the world to publicly say they were pulling their cash out of the stock market the Friday before the meltdown. That was me. I was the only guy in the world who came out publicly and said that. I pulled my money out of my core positions in the stock market because it looked like hyper bubble. I told people, I just pulled my cash out of the market. It's on public record. I'm the first. Wow. Wow. You've been the first on so many things. We just, we, this is why we're, we're so incredibly lucky to have you as a friend 
to the show. Now, Greg, this leads to my next question. This makes no sense to me personally. If we are printing a trillion dollars a day, just well, of U.S. dollars. <laughs> yeah, way more than that. That's, that's what's reported. I mean, Let's, it's like a trillion dollars every few hours at this particular time. We don't even know. This is, again, it's unlimited. So they can't tell us. They don't have to tell us what they're doing. In my view, we're doing a trillion dollars every few hours. Of our money, of American money, our money. Now, Greg, so my question was, we're not seeing this. They're not printing a trillion dollars and saying, okay, Michelle, here's a trillion for you. Okay, you know, Greg, there's your trillion. Let's pass it on out. This is our American money. Where is all of this huge, massive amount of money going? And I think you just touched on it, but I'd like you to be specific. Sure. First of all, none of the dollars that we have in our pocket or our bank accounts is ours. It belongs to the Federal Reserve. And not only does it belong to the Federal Reserve, it belongs to them plus interest that they print out of thin air. We never owned any of it. Uh, and, and it gets even deeper than that. People that understand how the fractional reserve system works, whatever digits you might look at your bank account and your, your tongue hanging out, or look at all the zeros I have, it's not there. The, the fractional reserve means there's only 10% of whatever you think you have in deposit in your account at any given time. Um, and again, this is how central banks keep their power by their ability to issue debt. That's all these are. These are unbacked liabilities being dispersed by a bankrupt government and a private corporation known as the Federal Reserve. Uh, there is no reserve whatsoever here. Uh, these trillions of dollars right now, they're burning them out. They're burning out the current dollar. In my view, what we're seeing now is, again, they're, they're dollarizing the world, telling central banks to buy it, telling our new government, we have a new government, new America. She welcomes all of you um, to, to buy multinational corporations, entire industries. This is what they're doing. And then once it burns out, they're going to flip the switch to that digital currency we were just talking about. Then a new system gets born out of the old. And that's exactly how this is going to work. They're going to start collecting cash at one point. Uh, the dollars that you have are gonna become relics. They're gonna become collector's items. You can probably stick them onto your wall and you're gonna be able to show these to your grandchildren. We used to use these when we used to go to stores. Really, Grandma? Grandpa? Is that what you used to do? Yeah, well, we have this little card now that we use for everything. Uh, why did you have to use paper or why did you have to use coins? Coins are being outlawed too. Coins and bills will no longer exist in the new American world. This is a, a global takeover, and I'm not kidding here. The new America is not just the United States of America. The new America is gonna sweep the world, especially with this new digital dollar. And of course, there's gonna be certain some resistance here, but let them try. Um, nation after nation is going to fall. Whoever tries to, even people here in the United States, who want freedom but are willing to take a check, of course, um, you know, they're, they're also going to fall too. There's going to be resistance, but it's, it's futile uh, on an epic scale. Um, and, and many people, what I want people to understand is, and probably a lot of the, those listening are going to embrace this new system. They're willing to give up freedoms. They're willing to give up liberty to be taken care of by a monster government. That's not what our forefathers envisioned. They envisioned a, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That's not what we have here. This new America is a monster government uh, who is taking over the world at this particular time via their central bank issuing trillions of dollars to buy it all. I have been screaming from rooftops since I don't know how long that the goal of central banks is to be the lender and the buyer of last resort while it's here now. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Seriously. So to nutshell this, they're printing trillions and trillions and trillions not to disperse amongst the American people. This is U.S. <laughs> dollars. But in fact, so that they can purchase everything. Everything. They're, they're, they're buying the world. You know, let's put another perspective on this. So we're getting a couple of checks from our government. This is what I understand. I have no idea how many checks we're supposed to be getting. Some people are telling me it's $2,000 per adult that I'm hearing as much as, as $4,000. Well, if it's two, let's just, let's just say it's $2,000. So if you measure that out over an entire year, well, that comes to less than $40 a week. Wow. What are you going to do with that? You see, it's already started. It's already started. Um, and then we got this national defense 
uh, Production Act that's going to be coming to uh, effect very, very soon, where the government can force you and your business into servitude. We've seen this before. Uh, this, this bill has been issued during wartime. Well, President Trump says we're in a war. Okay, all well and good. Um, yeah, and, and the central banks are winning, and there's no stopping them. But now uh, any individual here as a United States citizen and their business can be conscripted and forced into servitude for the government now that this is going to be enacted. And it's, it's going to be very soon. The president, I think, signed it last week. I don't know when it actually comes into effect, but it's going to. Now, expound on this a little bit for us. Let's say you own an accounting firm. Uh, what would happen to you? Under, under this act? Well, the government right. can you work for them. If you have a hair salon, the government can make you work for them. If you have whatever it might be, the government can make you work for them and, and they can pay you whatever they want to. There's no minimum wage. They can make you work for free. And that's the other part of this, this uh, production act that people don't understand. The other part of it is if you refuse, they will confiscate your business and your assets. Read the act. I'm urging people to read these things. Read the fine print. Um, you have no choice. If this is enacted against you as a free American citizen, you're no longer free at all. Whatever assets you may have, if you decide I am not doing this, I'm not going to serve the, the new America, well, guess what's going to happen to you? They're going to take it all. Your house, your car, your business, your assets will bury you. This is a, a, a way to make you a slave. And no one does this, they don't say anything. President says, we're going to do this for the good of the country. We have a crisis. That's what they do. Crisis, solution. Crisis, solution. So again, read the fine print and see how this would work out for you if the, if the government points their finger at you. And I'm talk, not talking about you personally. I'm talking right. about people who are listening here. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what, you know, you, you have a knife sharpening business. Well, the government could conscript you and they're going to take everything if you decide not to serve this new government. And what's, what is that bill called again, that act? The National Defense Production Act. National Defense Production Act. Yeah. Okay, something for everyone to look into. Um, I want to switch gears just a little bit into investing, Greg. You uh -huh. um, are so brilliant at turning bad situations into good situations. Is that possible now? Are there opportunities? Are you bullish on precious metals, specifically silver? What are your thoughts? There's always opportunity here. Um, look, let's just put it this way. I told, like I said, I came out publicly and I told people I was pulling my cash out of this market. So I preserved every single dime in my core positions. Then what did I do? Then I started betting against the market, started getting short the market. Uh, this is what uh, people like myself do. I told them, don't, don't hate the player, hate the game. So I've made money here while most people have lost money here. So have the investment banks. So have the, the wealthy, the rich, the people that know how to play this. Um, and again, people believe when the market goes down, it makes me laugh how many people don't understand this, that everyone loses money and money does not go to, it never goes to money heaven. When the stock market loses, well, right now we're down about 9,000 points off the high. Um, people look at their 401k, I lost 30, go, I lost 30 percent of my wealth. Where did it go? It didn't go to money heaven. It simply was transferred. It was transferred to someone else or, some, or a group of people or a corporation, uh, whatever. That, that's the way it's going to keep going. With regard to these markets, you got to be pretty slick. You got you to know where to put your money to work, how to play the game. Um, but on a, on a bigger scale here, and I, this has been my thing since day one, bet against the debt, become your own central bank. They're hyperinflating right now. The, at one point, I don't, I don't care what they try to do. Um, the, the, the real price of metals, gold and silver are going to be realized. Platinum, palladium, I own them all. Physical stuff. Okay, you got to own things. That's, that's what people don't understand. You got to own things. You don't want to be a slave. You want to own things outright. I also feel there's a major, major opportunities here. And I'm going to get a lot of heat for it, but this is my take. You can, people can, uh, think what they want to, I believe there's opportunity here in cryptocurrency as well. It's a non-government issued mode of transaction that you own. It's not like a Federal Reserve note where they own it. You own these things. Uh, could they be hacked? Sure. So can the digital dollar that's coming up. 
which we already have. Most dollars are already digital. If you go to the Federal Reserve's own website, you will see there exists on the planet $1.7 trillion. That's it. The rest of it is not on the elemental chart. It's, it's in fantasy land. So how easy is it going to be for them to flip the switch? It's already almost done. Most of this stuff here, 99.999% of it is digital already. 1.7 trillion compared to what they're doing now. $1.7 trillion exists. They're, they're issuing $1.7 trillion more digital dollars to the world every few hours. That's where we're at. And, and that's the move. The next move here is to that too. But it's all part of the same thing. We lost. Uh, I've been telling people that, to be ready for this, that they should even get together and revolt. But um, no one listened. Very few. Very few did. They, they, like I said, no one really wants to be free. They want to be taken care of. They want this government check. They want the bailout. They want their 401ks to go back up. That's what they really care about. They don't care about freedom anymore. They don't care about those people in those wars who have died for freedom or believe they were fighting for freedom, whether or not it was there or not. That's what they believe they were dying for. And that's what's going to happen in the future too, uh, sadly. But um, I, mean, I don't know what to say. That we're living in a completely different world than we had even a month ago. A new government, a new system, same, same players are there, of course. Did you hear this one? This one I think people need to know about. Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary. Okay, we understand. Um, he's asking Congress for a blank check, okay? And there's a, he's going to get it. But he's also asking to be able to withhold the names of the corporations that are being nationalized or bailed out for at least six months from the American people. How many people listening to this believe that is a good thing? Why would a treasury secretary, we know why he wants the blank check, but why would he want to withhold the names of the corporations for at least six months? I find that extremely disturbing. And I think anyone who does it, I don't know, welcome to the new world order. <laughs> what can I tell you? Right. It's our money. We ought to know where it's going. Um, we've watched companies like um, Boeing, Delta, Carnival Cruise Lines um, all watch their stock drop between about 60 to 80 percent because of this. So it's probably um, along those lines of those corporations. Um, what is your perspective on that if it is not them? Um, should the government bail them out or well, not do it, anything? It, 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 Oh, it's a guarantee. This is all, there's no doubt about it. This, first of all, there's a one party system. There's no Democrats, Republicans, it's all one. And this has all been in all the ones in the higher seats of office. They all know what's going on. Uh, the only people that don't know uh, are the, the, the people in the streets. Everyone knows this has been a multi decade long plan to bring about. Uh, a one world government and a, a one world currency. This is nothing new. I think people understand that. And that's what we're going to see here. And this is probably going to lead to armed conflicts uh, around the world, more people being conscripted and uh, forced to serve this new government. Look, their end goal is pretty simple. Their end goal is to also reduce the population by a vast amount. Uh, this coronavirus is, is, I mean, if you look at how many cases there are, uh, and compared to the global population, it doesn't even, it wouldn't even register as a blip on a radar screen. Um, but they're going to, they're, their goal is, I think, and I really believe this too, is to depopulate the world uh, at one particular time. Maybe it's going to happen very soon. I don't know. Maybe this entire thing they're doing is preparing for a real bio, bio weapon attack or some other thing like that. But they got us, you know, hunkered down in our houses we're slaves right now. We can't go anywhere. Uh, they're threatening, threatening to arrest people for leaving their houses. Uh, this sounds a lot like uh, Nazi Germany to me. Again, we, we moved very quickly towards national socialism. That's what this is. For those people that were afraid of Bernie Sanders socialism, well, we've taken that to, to, to the nth degree at this particular time, and people are sitting there silent. They're not saying anything. Uh, those so-called Q patriots sat by and did nothing. Well, we have a complete takeover of the world by the Federal Reserve, all because they were believing that Donald Trump was going to take down the Fed. It was never going to happen. It can't happen. The Federal Reserve, they would have to take down the largest banks in the world. Who has more power? Let me tell you, we all know who runs the world. It's not kings, 
queens, presidents, monarchs. The world is run by the banks. Once people understand that, everything will become clear to them. Until they get that mental block out of their head that they believe the world is run by a king, a queen, a president, or a monarch, well, then they'll never understand what's really going on here. But this is much bigger. It's been going on actually since the discovery of the new world. This has been planned. The new world. Why was America called the new world? Is it a new planet? Oh, because again, this has been in the work since that time here. And if you know who it is, it's the one percenters. It's the vampires. That's what I call them. It's the vampires who are running the entire show. They run the banks. They own the banks. They own the Fed. They're the ones that are issuing in this new world order here. Uh, and it's never enough for them. They literally want to own the world. This is where we're at. Uh, things are changing. Things are not what they were. Uh, I mean, even though we were having this, this slow merger between the, uh, the corporations and, and the government, we're here now. This is what they wanted, and it's going to sweep the globe. It's going to sweep the globe very rapidly. And sadly, most people are going to, going to want it. Uh, like I said, they don't want to be free. They want that instant gratification. They want that check. They want to be taken care of. They don't want a free market. They don't want a free market economy. Everything's going to be blamed on capitalism. If we allowed capitalism to work, we wouldn't be here right now. We started, you know when this really started? It started under Barack Obama. When Barack Obama started in 2008 with uh, the Federal Reserve uh, QE1, let me clarify real quick. QE1 had to happen, and I'll tell you why. Because the credit markets froze. If the credit markets did not get unfrozen, we'd be in Mad Max today. That's where it should have stopped. We went from Dow 12,000 to Dow 6,000. The Fed stepped in, unfreeze the credit markets, capital injection started. That was it. It should have stopped there. But no, there went QE1, QE2, Operation Twist, all kinds of backdoor stuff going on. And President Trump just took it over. He just took it over. You see, President Trump said this, oh, the stock market's a big, fat, ugly bubble at about where it is now, 19,000 and change during the campaign. And he said the Federal Reserve was artificially uh, creating a bubble to make Obama look good. What did he do? He had the Federal Reserve just do the same thing. If it weren't for the Fed, you see, President Trump and, the, and has been playing good cop, bad cop with the Fed since the get-go. Because if it weren't for the Federal Reserve artificially suppressing rates, does he believe his fake stock market would have gotten up to almost 30,000? Of course not. We wouldn't even be anywhere near it. It's the Fed that's been pro providing liquidity for this market that's been backstopping everything. And look what they're doing now. President Trump, we're booming. Put that money in the stock market. You just lost 30%. And now he's telling you it's going to go back up. I have no idea what they have up their sleeve next. But I don't believe, gauging from looking at the debt market, that we're done. Until the bond market stabilizes, until we see a 10-year yield above 1% and stays there for a little while, big whoopee do. We put on 2,000 points today. We lost 10,000 off, the, off the, the high. And people thinking this is the end? Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. Hmm. Let me ask you something. When this is said and done, because I don't think that people grasp, I don't think our, I don't think the generations that are on the planet right now have had enough experience or education in history. They've never really had to, you know, stand for anything because they've been given everything. And when you're mm -hmm. given everything, you don't know what it takes to get it. Mm -hmm. And so... I think really that's the problem. It's almost, it's been too easy. And then they hear about, you know, old veterans of war come and they speak and their eyes just glaze over. It's like, oh, that, what does that matter? That's the old days. Everything's so easy now. Mm -hmm. Once the rug is pulled out from us and once um, the Federal Reserve and the bankers have control, the problem with the cashless society and everyone, all of my friends are all about cryptocurrencies, which are great. But it's very obvious that the central banks are going for their own cryptocurrencies now in which they're going to hold the wallets. And you're not going to hold your own wallet. The Federal Reserve holds your wallet. So mm -hmm. it's no different than having a bank account, really. Um, they can control it. Um, and that's the difference between that and Bitcoin. So, Greg, compare Bitcoin to the central bank digital currency and tell us whether or not Bitcoin would be safe. Because 
if it opposes a central bank digital currency and it is in fact the opponent, the enemy, whatnot, could they pull the plug on it? I mean, what could happen here? Here's the issue with, um, with let's say Bitcoin. Okay, I don't think Bitcoin has ever been a threat. First of all, the entire market cap of all of the existing cryptocurrencies does not, does not equal one DAO component or one large corporation. There's no threat at all with regard to the, the cryptocurrencies that exist to a Federal Reserve issued digital dollar, digital wallet, none. So I don't see these things disappearing, could they? I guess they could, but I don't, I don't think so. I think they'll find, there'll be a way, some creative individual will find a way to make them survive. But the, 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 the other issue with, with, I think a lot of these cryptocurrencies here is their volatility. I mean, you, let's just stick to Bitcoin because most people are familiar with it. We've had some incredible swings. It's very volatile because it's thinly traded. Anything that's thinly traded um, is very volatile. So it was never really a threat to um, the dollar in that respect as well, because the companies are, uh, that would accept Bitcoin, and some do, a lot do, BMW right down the block from my house, they have said, we accept Bitcoin, they'll, they'll, you can buy a car with Bitcoin. Um, a, lot of, a lot of businesses have that. But the fact that it's so volatile is what really kept it from being a real, I don't want to say a real currency because it kind of it is a real currency, but it, it's not stable enough to be used um, every day and or around the world. It would need to be stable. Everyone wants Bitcoin to go up. I think Bitcoin is going much higher. All right, but what does that say? It says it's not stable. All right, everyone wants Ripple to go much much higher. That means it's not stable. So these are investment vehicles more than they are a currency. In my in my view, but I think they're going up, and I, I I I'm a big advocate of them. I own them. I own all the big ones, and I'm going to buy more of them, no doubt about it. But <laughs> the difference is going to be with regard to the Federal Reserve issued one. It's going to be dead on stable. It needs to be any currency needs to be stable to work. Uh, it can't have wild volatility. It can't have wild swings. You can't have people holding it saying, I hope this goes up three, four, five hundred, ten thousand percent. Because that's what they want to do. So then how does it become, how can it be viable mm -hmm. as a mode of transaction if it's not stable, where it can go up a thousand one day, down a thousand the next day? It can't happen. That's going to be the difference between the government issued one. I think cryptocurrency is a place people need to be, 100%. I've been saying it for the longest time. But to me, why do I own them? All right, I'm going to tell people why I own them. I have never transacted. In, I can't say that. That's not really true. I have sent Bitcoin and stuff to around the world. So I, I, I actually have transacted in it. Um, I've transacted in Litecoin and a few other ones as well. But I haven't really went out and bought a BMW with it. I haven't went out and, and bought dishes for my house with it. To me, as a trader, as an investor, looks at these things more as an investment vehicle because I believe they're going higher. Okay, I believe they're going much higher. I also believe gold and silver are going much higher too. There, you see, silver, the, the issue with silver is it's also very, very, very unstable. People, a lot of people say, hey, Greg, why can't we have a commodity back, you know, with silver, uh, a currency back with silver? Because it's unstable. Gold is actually very stable, but massively undervalued. The reason why these metals here are, are at the prices they are now, and they have no bearing on reality, is because of deliberate price suppression. I think we all know that. How many banks have been caught rigging it? JP Morgan has been caught over and over and over, red-handed. What happens to them? Nothing. Why? They're one of the banks that run the Federal Reserve. So they're, they, they can do anything. They are invincible. They have more power than you could possibly imagine. Uh, and they run the government as well. Um, it's, it's a sick thing. But th that's the difference to me between what we're going to see here, what we will see with regard to a Federal Reserve issued digital currency. It's going to be stable uh, as opposed to one of these other ones that very, very wildly, um, and, and that allows speculation. People like it. Look, 
I like I like speculation. I like to think, hey, I'm going to buy this, and then maybe five days from now, I'm going to make 100% on my money. Or I could possibly lose it too, but maybe I'll average into it. I mean, you know, look, this is well, every guy like me, every trader is a little bit of a gambler too. You know what I mean? You speculate. You want to think about what may come down the pike here. And if you're right, most of the time, you do well. That's really it. <laughs> Great. Because um, I guess that's the biggest question for, you know, Bitcoiners. Um, when they start to hear about this um, new digital dollar and the wallet, it's you know. Yeah. Um, but but it's, so they're, they're safe simply because of the volatility. So, so you're betting. Yeah. Great. Now, I want to hear before we go what you're going into. You're going into metals. You're going into silver. You're going well, into I've, cryptos. I've been into them. I've been yeah, into you've been into them. Okay, but that's where. For years and years and years and years. Right. right. Um, I've been, I've been, I, I was a late comer to the cryptocurrency uh, thing. I didn't know what to make of it at first. Look, I'm old. I'm, I'm 54. You know, so I have, I'm like old school. So a lot of, I really am. I'm telling you the truth. I'm like, I'm old school. It takes, it's funny. People that know me at a personal level, when I do something, I turn like an aircraft carrier real slow, real slow. I got to ponder things. I'm not like one of these guys like this. I can't just, when it comes to making a big decision, like a big financial decision or something, like I'll talk to a friend of mine, I'm, my friend JP, I talk to him every day. He's a trader. It's like, Greg, you know, we should do this. We should put money in here. I'm like, well, hold on. Let me think about it. No, no, no. I'm buying it now. I'm like, hold on a minute, dude. I need a little time. Let me, I'm like, you know how I operate. <laughs> I turn slowly. Give me a little time and we'll see where it goes. I have to ponder things very deeply. Um, and I think I am a pretty deep thinker because of that reason. I don't just act. I like to think about what's coming and what may connect, be connected to it down the pike. And it's proven to be pretty good for me. And maybe I would do better if I thought faster or I was able to make those snap kind of calls like my buddy JP. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't know why. Like I said, I'm old school. Cautious. Um, well, for our audience, um, because of what we've been talking about and because of what you see coming, um, the, uh, the metals and the cryptos looking good, the last question I have for you is real estate. What's going to happen to real estate after this? Is it going to go down fast or up fast? What could happen? Well, in the present situation here, people are going to, they're going to get hurt in this engineered global economic shutdown we have. Uh, and then the people that lost those jobs are going to be absorbed by the corporate these corporations that are being nationalized. But I think real estate here um, is in a bubble as well. And, but we, we have to understand this too. The Federal Reserve is going to nationalize the entire mortgage market. They're already, they're talking about buying it all. So the uh, mortgage debt um, is all gonna be bought up by the Fed. They're gonna run the entire thing. Um, let's see how they play it. I don't know between the banks uh, and the Federal Reserve. I think ser sincerely that we are in a bubble with regards to real estate. I think people that are buying now um, fortunately, I bought at the top of the bubble, and we're probably going to see prices come down here at one point. But the big problem I think we need to face, that we are going to face here, is, is the debt market issue. The debt market issue, and this is why they're moving to the new dollar here, it, a new system. It's all going to need to be bought, and this is their end game, by the central banks around the world. Because if they don't do that, if they don't do that, the debt market is the biggest bubble of them all. I think we all know that. And that that's a lot of stock market bubble to inflate. That's a lot of real estate bubble to inflate. I think the end game here, we already know the Federal Reserve has admitted for the first time ever that they are buying corporate debt. The Federal Reserve is not just buying government debt. They're buying municipal debt and they're buying corporate debt. Now they're buying it all. They have to. And it's also part of the plan too. So let's see how this, look, this is so big. Let's see how it manifests itself with regard to the yield curve. The yield curve is always going to exist. There's always going to be some type of, whether it's inverted, whether it's flat, whether it's a normal. But the Fed, now that they are taking over the entire world and buying everything, they're buying the world, um, I'm certain this has already been worked out. I am certain they already have every mathematical formula available, and they've actually run through simulations of how they're going to do it. 
Um, that still remains to be seen. But the debt market still here today, if we just look at, the, let's just take one thing to look at. Let's look at the 10 year yield. I know this is like getting big, it's probably over a lot of people's heads here. But if we just look at one, let's just look at the 10 year yield, which is below 1%. To me, that's a debt market with red lights flashing all over the place. They got to get some stability in the debt market. Now, once that happens, I know this is getting kind of long, a lot longer than I thought we'd run here, but yeah, once they're yeah. able to stabilize the debt market, you know, maybe they can pull a rabbit out of a hat here and they're going to make it all work. We'll be okay. But if they don't stabilize that debt market, what's going to end up happening is what I've been explaining to people for like, a million years, or at least it seems to me, a massive sell-off in the debt market. If the debt market sells off massively, and maybe this is what they're setting up too, I don't know, maybe they're gonna engineer it. What's gonna happen? Debt sells off, rates are gonna spike very, very rapidly, very rapidly, just as fast as this market bled off. When cash goes into the debt market, rates drop. When cash comes out of the debt market, rates rise, okay, and henceforth why you see uh, the yield curve was doing right now, this is the Federal Reserve buying all the debt, okay, this is what they've been doing. But is it engineered in such a way that they're gonna allow it to spring higher? If that happens, you're gonna see a stock market crater to a point where people aren't gonna believe, they're gonna get completely wiped out. This may be part of the end game here. So I want people to be very cautious, tread with caution here, because we don't know yet What's going to happen here in the debt market? I mean, look, I'm a stock derivative guy for the most part, but I watch the debt market first. First, I always look at what's happening in the debt because it's the biggest market of them all. And everything derives value from what's happening in the debt market. So with suppressed rates, what have we seen happen? Stock market bubble, bubble. Um, basically, I, mean, I, I could go on and on, but let's just stick to those few things. If we have the opposite happen, where rates spike, well, you're going to see what? That market sell off. Then that cash, too, isn't going to go to money heaven. This is what I see. Let's, I know I'm going on and on, but let, let me just finish this point here. Mm. I've been telling people that I believe that commodity is going to skyrocket at one point. Okay. Uh, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and crude oil, too. Um, why? Because they're real things. So we do end up with a situation they don't get hold or control of the debt market and the debt market sells off where's the and that cash starts bleeding off all over the place and then henceforth puts pressure on the stock market reverse of what we've been seeing since qe1 under obama that cash is going to leave the stock market where is it going to go it's going to go into commodities it's going to go into cryptocurrencies that's where it's going to go okay so there's so many scenarios i mean you and i I could sit here and talk to you for probably an entire day and I could, to lay all this stuff out because it, it's just so big. And as you can see, it fills my brain constantly. But, but that's what I see. And I think people can take what they want away from this, this uh, interview that we're doing here and see what makes sense to them. And I would love to see what they say, too. Some people are going to think I'm a nut and I'm wrong and I'm crazy, and that's okay, too. But most people are going to say, the guy has a point. That's what I believe. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to hear about everybody's perspective. You know what, in the comments, because this could play out in so many different ways. That's the danger of this, because you can call what you foresee, and you can make educated guesses, and someone such as yourself who's been in it and knows exactly what goes on behind the scenes, you're still like, well, if it does this, X. If it does this, Y. So we're in a situation now, it's a little bit iffy. Do you think that there is an actual plan that's been engineered? Or do you think that everyone's sort of in the same situation of we're not exactly sure? Oh, no. This is, well, let's go. Let's take a Federal Reserve president at his word. Just several days ago, Federal Reserve President James Bullard came out and he said, this has been planned. I want people to look it up. A Federal Reserve president said, this has been planned. It's been rehearsed. This is a Federal Reserve 
president. Again, didn't get much coverage, but you can see his exact statement. I posted it on my Facebook page. I posted it on my Twitter feed. Here's the, here's the issue just, again, with variables here. I have been able to call this market to a level of accuracy that has been scary to even myself. I'm dead serious with the top of this market, what would happen in certain aspects of the market. But now we have a very new variable. The new variable is the new America. It's in this new digital currency. We have a couple of new variables. Now, again, like I told you, I don't turn too fast. I'm kind of like an aircraft carrier. We should re go over this again, let's say in a couple of months and see where we're at. And I, have, I will have a better handle on it at that point. I got to take in a lot of data. I got to ponder it. I got to think about it. And I do this even in my sleep. I, I really do. <laughs> I got to get a life. I know. But um, no, it's true. So now that we have this completely new variable in here, again, we don't have a United States of America anymore. This is a new America, which is a huge variable here. We've never been in an environment where the United States were, well, here, where we're buying, we're nationalizing corporations, we're buying corporate debt, we're buying municipal debt, the, what's going on in the repo market. We've never been here before. This is, this makes what happened in 2008 with regard to printing money out of thin air and stimulus. I mean, we did, we're doing this in one day. What they did the entire financial crisis, we're doing in one day. So that should tell you something. So that's why I'm saying that I got to ponder this. I got to think about, I got to see where we're going. I want to see how fast they, um, they issue in this new digital currency, which is here. Um, I want to see what else they're going to buy. I want to see what central banks are doing with the cash that's being given to them by the Federal Reserve. We know they're buying assets with it. I want to see where this goes and how fast it goes. I also want to see where the stock market goes. We had a pretty big rally on Wall Street today off of what? We're shut down. There's nothing going on here in the stock market rallies like this. Well, that's the Fed. The Fed admitted they're buying exchange traded funds. The Fed is buying the stock market now. They are going to be the lender and buyer of that sort, even in the market. Maybe they're going to push it back up. I don't know. We just get, what I tell my traders, I call them my lions, is trade the market you have, the one that's in front of you, not the one that you're thinking about next week, the one that's in front of you today. Trade it, make it work for you. You won't always be right, but if you can stay ahead of it and be right most of the time, you're going to be fine. Don't expect you're going to win every trade. It can't happen. I don't care how good you may think you are. It's impossible. I don't have winning trades every day. I had a losing trade today, as a matter of fact. It's going it's to happen. That's life in the big city. But anyway, that's wow. it. I think I'm yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, it is always so amazing and fun to have you on this show. Please tell everyone about your website and also yeah. how to follow you and get all of the updates on your work. Just go right to my website, traderschoice.net. I got everything there for you. 99% of the stuff there is all, all free for you. In fact, practically 100%. I have a chat room there. I have my, my blog there, charts, you name it. It's all there. Take advantage of it. It's a lot of fun. Interact with some pretty smart people uh, in my chat room. Big shout out to all of you. And, uh, and that's it. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Great to be here. Thank you. Mr. Gregory Manorino expert trader and the man behind traderschoice.net. For the industry experts panel, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. 